So, I'm back in studio, so I think it's time I get back to, you know, reviewing product I bought. I brought a lot of product in the last couple of months, but I didn't, like, have a chance to review them. The first product I want to review has been provided me directly by Seagate. That's the expansion card, the one terabyte, uh, for the Xbox Series X and S. I do have both consoles, so it's going to be super interesting to see if there's a performance difference between both. Also, the expansion card is really tiny, super portable. It's quite easy, you just remove the top and plug it in the Xbox. To be clear, I'm not compensated for this review, but Seagate sent the, um, the card for free and said that I could keep it as a sample. I also appreciate that they were like, just send us the review when you're done because we don't want to interfere with the review process. Okay, so while I was doing the unboxing, there was one thing I was looking for. Uh, I'll tell you about that just a little later. You can see that it's the one terabyte drive. There's a three year warranty also, which is good. I like having warranty that is more than one year. The thing I was looking for, it was the spec for the max writing speed and the max reading speed. They didn't advertise it on the box and I can understand why, because it's the official expansion and the marketing on Microsoft websites say that like, it's as fast as the internal, which we'll need to test, of course. Uh, I think they just figure out, well, it's not like a PC drive where we're trying to sell it to you on the speed spec versus other drive. So they just didn't put it there. For size comparison, you can see the drive here next to uh, 2230 NVMe SSD drive that was in my ROG Ally and also a Canadian Toonies. If you're American, you're probably like, what the hell is that? Here you can see the drive with the protective part uh, on it. I appreciate they put one, but we all know uh, it's a miracle I haven't lost it in a week, I have the drive. Before installing the drive, I wanted to look at the inscription. Take the cap off, plug it in the Xbox and start the Xbox. I think we'll be able to do that, so let's try it. The task was a success. Okay, so on first boot, nothing happened. So you need to go in storage and it's like here, already see the drive, configure it and everything's good. You can see that the drive is coming with uh, 920 gig of uh, space left when you plug it. And that the Series S, which I'm doing the test on right now, has only 360 gig of storage space by default. If you don't want to download the file in the internal and then mm, uh, copy or move it to the external, you can go in your preference and change the setting and say download all the new games and apps directly to the storage expansion card. Now, when thinking how to review the drive, I could see three tests that were important, really important to do. First one is copying a game from the internal to the storage card and then to the storage card to the internal to see if there was a speed difference between both drive. The second test would be a loading test, loading a game from the storage and then from the internal and again see if there's a time difference between both of them. And the last test would be to just play game and see if I could see the difference between the stor internal storage and the storage card. So let's do those tests. Now I have hours of uh, footage capture in OBS of me copying things, but I don't think it's going to be that interesting. So we'll go quick over that footage. One thing that is important uh, with the A Series S and X is that the Xbox have smart delivery, which is basically a profile. So it won't download the 4K asset if you're playing on the Series S because it's a 1440p maximum resolution console while it will download them on the Serie X because for, uh, they're aiming between 1440p and 4K. It's good because when I'm using my ROG Ally, the issue is that like, yeah, it's gonna download like 120 gigs for Red Dead Redemption 2, but I'm only gonna play them at the maximum at 1080p. I think the idea behind it is that uh, if you plug the console with an external GPU, you could then play at 4K, so they'll make sure that you have all the assets and all the resolution available, but it's taking way more space that you need. 
one example for how that is Diablo 4. I was curious how the drive would manage mod delivery because Diablo 4 is 44 gig on the Serie S, but over 85 on the Serie X. When I switched the expansion card to the Serie X, I had a pop up when I tried to play Diablo 4 saying, oh, you need more files if you want to play this game. And then there was a 52 gig patch to download. Now, after downloading the file and playing Diablo 4, if I put back the card in the Serie S, it would say, oh, Diablo is only 44 gigs, even if it would take like almost 100 gigs on the hard drive. So it's managed automatically. It will get the file if you move like between console a lot. And I still think it's the best solution because it's kind of transparent. You're on the S, you move to the X, it's asking you to update the file, get the 4K texture, and then you're okay. The only thing to remember is that if you are after that mostly on the Serie S, you should probably download Diablo and uh, delete Diablo and re-download it. So this way it's only going to take 44 gigs and not uh, like, I don't know, 90. Before doing their performance testing, I needed to recheck the specs of the Serie S and X. Basically for storage, it's it's support for one terabyte uh, Seagate expansion card for Xbox Series X and S, match internal storage exactly. Uh, the uh, input output is supposed to be 2.4 gig of raw and 4.8 gig of compressor. That's for the Series S. Then if I switch on the X, uh, the specs are the same from the Microsoft.com website. So this shouldn't be any difference between both consoles for the performance. I started doing my tests on the Serie S and then moved to the X. When I did that, I started having an issue. It said getting your game ready. And then I had a pop-up asking me if I would use that console between multiple hard drive, which is the case. But then on the Serie X, it started to tell me that like, This was telling me to reinsert my storage expansion card that we could see the card, but the connection was too weak to use. And there was a Windows error code and to contact Microsoft support. Of course, after like doing a hard shutdown, then doing a reboot a couple of times, uh, I had to do a quick Reddit search just to see if it was like a issue with my Xbox. The Series X is a launch Xbox, so I thought maybe the port for the card was like defective. But after looking on Reddit, it seemed that it's more like a power management option to put your card uh, when you shut down the console, to put the, st the console to be fully off and to not uh, power off the card like if it goes in standby. So after switching those options, everything was back to normal and I could use the card on, on the, the Serie X. It's good to know, but I still think that it's an OS issue. Microsoft should let you know that by installing that card, you should modify like your setting or doing it automatically so you don't run into that issue. Okay, so now that that issue was fixed, we could move to performance. The first thing I wanted to do is just play some game. Would I feel like a difference playing like single player game like Divinity Original Sin, uh, Diablo 4, or Cyberpunk 2077? Uh, those games are all single player game. There's a reason for that because like with the variance that you could have on network connection time, like playing Destiny 2, yeah, it would be an interesting test to do, but if there's problem with the server ping, then the test would like make one of the drive look worse than it is in reality. While for single player game, I shouldn't have that issue. Diablo and Cyberpunk 2077 uh, played like normally. I could not tell the difference if it was loading from the R drive or it was loading from the internal, which is good. Then I would take a game from the internal R drive and move it to the storage expansion card. And then I would do the opposite from the storage expansion card to the internal while timing it to see if there would be a time difference. We'll look at the performance in a second. So for the transfer between the drive, you could see it's faster writing to the internal than writing to the expansion card. 
One example is writing Starfield, which is almost 110 gig, take like four minutes, 26 seconds to transfer to the internal, but will take five minutes, 30 seconds to transfer to the storage card. And for Cyberpunk, it's gonna be like two uh, or over two minutes to transfer to the internal, but over three minutes to transfer to the storage card. But it's only half of the picture. You also need to look at loading time. And this is where it gets super interesting. You can see that basically like Starfield take the same or Octopath take the same time to load from the internal or from the storage. And by loading, I mean starting the game and the timer at the same time and get to the menu. And you can see it's the same thing for Cyberpunk. For the Divinity Original Sin, that was a little faster on the storage card, and Mortal Kombat 11 was exactly the same time. Now, there's variance into this, because there were, if I don't push the button exactly at the same time that I start the transfer, there could be like an error margin there. But basically, the story is that, like, yeah, the drive is maybe faster on the internal, but you don't see any difference in the loading time, so it's a success there. So what are the conclusion there? Well, there's a lot of positive for the drive. First, it's easy to set up. It really is plug and play. It's the official and it's a very good solution for expanding your storage for the Serie X and S game. Pretty much. The loading and transfer speed are good and it's small and portable. One case that I could see with it that I didn't thought is that when I go in summer visit friends and family, they have slower internet and some of them have data cap. We wanted to play a game like Shredder Revenge, so I uh, just downloaded it to their console. It's only three gig, but like downloading stuff like NBA um, 2K24 is like 160 gig on the X. So it's not like really a solution. You need to download it in advance. But now with the storage card, I can just bring it in my backpack with the game we need and just plug it to the console and log into my uh, Game Pass account. It's not a main usage, but it's a nice perk. Now for the negative, we need to talk about the price of the storage expansion card. For the one terabyte, uh, the MSRP was $280, which is quite expensive, especially considering that the Siri S was selling for $380 Canadian. Now that was like the price at launch. I'm assuming there was some kind of exclusivity window. And it's not unheard on console that like sometimes the um, the accessories are expensive. Like if you look at the Switch, the Switch Pro controller is ninety dollar Canadian. Now there's like uh, Western Digital that like released a C fifty R drive and that put like pressure on the price. So now it's around two hundred dollar for the card. Do I wish that the card would be cheaper? Yeah, for sure. Especially compared to the price of a NVMe our drive, but the fact that it's portable and that the loading speed is the same uh, that the internal of the console bring a lot of value there. Now, uh, I wish that the Xbox OS would manage the error message for the power issue a little better. The message is quite generic. It's, it's not clear if you don't do a quick search on Reddit or Google, what is the problem? Lead it you think that the card is maybe defective when it's not the case. Now, another negative is that the internal is faster, but I put a big asterisk to it. Yeah, it's faster when copying from the uh, to the internal and writing to the storage card versus the opposite. But performance wise, it doesn't seem to matter. Loading game are at the same speed. So where does it leave us? Well, if your hard drive is full for the Xbox and you have Game Pass or love to play a lot of multiple game at the same time, I think the storage expansion card is the best solution for you. Thanks for watching and see you next time.